Blow up a cow? That's really rude. <laughs> the intro or <laughs> oh yeah hey welcome uh god this is like our what four and a half um yeah <laughs> welcome to our four and a half of the triad <laughs> i'm hannah i'm shannon i'm shelby okay go to the thing <laughs> is it an episodes folder i hope so it is yes it is i may okay um, so I said we were going to talk about the Warrens, but fuck that. They're too complicated. There's a lot of drama over there, so I found What something. the fuck is this? Right? I've never so heard, heard of this, I've and never I'm heard of this. All right, cool. <laughs> get ready for some hardcore Catholic propaganda, okay? <laughs> yeah. get serious. Let's do this. Also, I'm... I appreciate your uh, Southern linguistics down at the bottom there. Yeah, there's <laughs> that is apostrophes proper grammar. in y'alls. Yes. There is. I'm not an Crazy. idiot. What do you want? Mama didn't raise no fool. Okay. Hey, what so, the majority of my information came from miraclesofthechurch.com. Oh, God. <laughs> Capital C Church. Um, also, I used Wikipedia, Atlas Obscura, Priestfield Pastoral Center's website, and <laughs> I think it was a historical marker foundation. I don't really know. It hmm. was called WGP Foundation. All right. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah, cool. I don't really know. Let's do this. Okay. Slide three. Three? Yep. Okay. We're yes. Just going. Sorry. We're going. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I will now tell you a story. All right. So uh, this takes place in Middleway, West Virginia. I don't know why I read it like that. Middleway, West Virginia. <laughs> Middleway, <laughs> West Virginia. All right. So okay. one day in 1794, <laughs> we're going way back. Um, a middle-aged man knocked on the door of the Livingston family's home and asked to lodge with them. It being the old times, Adam Livingston <laughs> agreed because, you know, <laughs> it's the shit you used to do. Um, a few <laughs> days totally. after the... What? <laughs> I said totally. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sometimes it be like that in the old times. <laughs> um, So a few days after the arrival of the traveler, uh, he suddenly took ill and his illness became more life-threatening. And so he was like, yo, Livingston, can you please call a priest? I am but a poor Catholic man. Um, (laughs) And I really think I'm about to die. And Livingston was like, fuck you. I'm a dick and I'm a Lutheran and I hate the church. (laughs) And I'm only saying that because he was a dick at the beginning of the story. Um, not that okay. Lutherans are dicks. It's just this man in particular was being a yes. dick. <laughs> Him being a Lutheran, Lutheran had nothing to do with it. He's just yes. a dick. Um, and so he said to the guy, this is a direct quote, that he knew of no priest in that neighborhood. And if there was one, he should never pass the threshold of his door. So like, fuck you. Just die. <laughs> Basically. Um, so the man again begged for a priest. But Livingston was like, no. Um, and uh, to be fair to Livingston, there was probably not a priest in the area because, um, it was a very Protestant area and like the old times. Um, but they were in Maryland, so. (laughs) No, they were not in Maryland. So, you know. It's where all the Catholics were sent. (laughs) Hey, guess what? Maryland's gonna make an appearance in this. (laughs) Um, surprise. (laughs) But also like the guy was dying. So you could have been a little nicer. You'd have to be so rude. Anyway, so the stranger died. And apparently, all that time that he was at Livingston's house, um, they had never spoken to each other. Or, like, they never got to know each other. So Livingston had no idea who this guy was. Like, he was just a stranger. Yeah, like, at least, like, three days. Yeah, it said a few days, so. Okay. Well, if he just showed up and immediately got sick, I'm not, like, that wouldn't surprise me necessarily that they weren't making time for small talk, so. That's true. (laughs) But the guy had no identifying papers or anything and just was D.E.D. dead. Yes. (laughs) Um, So, uh, that night, Livingston employed a man named Jacob Foster to sit with the corpse. I don't know why. It just said, quote, out of respect for the dead or something like that. I don't know. Um, Hmm. 
So Foster yeah. was in there alone. He was just in some room with the body, and he was trying to light candles in the dark. But as soon as he would get the candles to light, they would blow out by an unseen force. And he tried nope, multiple. Like yep, <laughs> and he tried multiple <laughs> times to relight them, but every single time they were extinguished without any apparent cause. And he later attested that he never felt any wind or anything. It was just they would just go out. So he's like, okay, I'm not gonna be freaked out. Maybe they're just shitty candles. <laughs> so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he went to... It is the old times. It know. is the old times, <laughs> he said to himself. Um, okay, so yeah. Jacob Foster went out to, um, I don't know, the living room. <laughs> what, what are they, the den. I don't know. Whatever they had. The foyer. Whatever the body the was laying. <laughs> the vestibule. Yeah, uh, the vestibule. Uh. I'm pretty sure they lived in a log cabin, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Um, this is Virginia in the 1700s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so Foster went out there and told Livingston about the candles. He's like, hey, man, either you got a ghost or some shit candles. Uh, he didn't say that, but, you know. Um, <laughs> Those are so your the only living- two options. <laughs> Those are your only two options. Ghost or shit candles. Shitty candles. That's it. <laughs> uh, Livingston got him one that was from the room that he and his family were in. And so he knew it wasn't mm-hmm. defective because it was burned down about a third of the way and so the, he uh, uh jacob what's his name foster was like okay cool thanks and took it and went into the room and it immediately blew itself out and Gross. then foster was like cool uh this shit's haunted and <laughs> left and went home he was like not doing it bye you can have this yep freaky body room <laughs> um so then the next day with the help of some neighbors um adam livingston buried the stranger on his property and didn't really know how to mark the grave properly because he didn't know the guy's name. So he just like put a little marker there and was like, I guess. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> Problem yeah. solved. Okay, next slide. Then <laughs> things started to get weird. Um, weirder, I guess. So yeah. suddenly there was like a bunch of poltergeist activity in the house. The family Great. barn was, <laughs> quote, the family bar wait the family quote barn was wait oh my god i fucked that up okay, the family <laughs> barn was quote burnt to the ground and a number of his cattle and livestock either died or strangely disappeared inside the family home the cookware was thrown upon the floor and was broken without any apparent cause and strange bells would clang disturbing its hearers along with the dead or missing livestock uh and phantom bells clanging, he additionally reported a string of other negative events such as a sudden disappearance of coins, the heads of his turkeys and chickens being strangely removed, and the burning embers of wood suddenly leaping from the fireplace several feet out onto the floor, endangering the house and its fright and frightening the bewildered inhabitants. So it's just like real creepy poltergeist shit. Yeah, I didn't like the bells a lot. Like, I thought that was going to be my least favorite thing. And then there were animals turning up without heads. And now yeah. that's my least favorite thing. And then there were yeah. headless turkeys. And he was like, yeah. cool, that's awful. Yeah. But it gets even weirder. <laughs> ah. So, <laughs> in my opinion, this is just very strange. Um, So one night, the family heard the sound of a large pair of scissors just, like, snipping through the house. Yeah, I don't like that. Oh my god, I don't like that. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like some Coraline bullshit. It really does. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that at all. There there was just the sound of, you know, snipping. I have to go. My pizza boyfriend is here. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Go get your pizza. Oh my god, this is what happens when we record for four hours. <laughs> what? You can't sit on this chair with okay. me, ma'am. Got your pizza? Yes. And it was not Good. my pizza boyfriend. It was more like the father of my pizza boyfriend. <laughs> your pizza father-in-law. <laughs> my pizza father in My pizza father-in-law. Oh my god. <laughs> I sound like such a New Englander because I'll do the thing where I add E-R. R. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of words that end in a vowel. Anyway, I'm out of breath. I just ran up the stairs. Okay, sorry to leave you with that thought. So, the family heard snipping. Right, scissors. Yes, gross. Don't the like it. The sound of shears throughout the house yes. just... Oh, I wish I had a... Do I have a parent here? No. Okay. Um, snipping throughout the house. And yeah, I don't like that. They found out the next morning when they looked at everything that something had gone through the house and clipped out in the form of, like, little half moons. Um, just, like, clipped out those little 
pieces out of like blankets, sheets, tablecloths, shoes, clothing, and there were also what? some reports. Yeah, and there were some reports later. <laughs> Ma'am, that it... please catch your breath. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, there were also reports later that it happened to like people's not like the same shape because you can't do it with like hair but to like people's yeah. hair and to animals fur and stuff oh like that oh my god so that's the wizard I clip don't... was born oh okay <laughs> makes sense i get it now yes <laughs> oh okay yeah so the clipping continued daily for up to three months um, oh my god just clippy, clip, 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 clip. <laughs> um, wow, that was embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the news of the wizard clip uh, was spreading. So an old Presbyterian lady from Martinsburg, and this is all places in Virginia, so I don't really know where it is. Um, yeah. Heard of the clipping, and she was like, "I that's my shit. I gotta go see that." <laughs> so, I imagine right, like yeah. myself as an old it. woman. I was gonna say like I get that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really relatable. All right, yeah. quote: Before entering the door, she took from her head a new silk cap, wrapped it up in her silk handkerchief, and put it in her pocket to save it from being clipped. If such stories were true, she thought. Or if such stories were even true, she thought. After her visit, she stepped out of the Livingston home, and while doing so, she drew out of her pocket her handkerchief containing her new silk cap, and opening it, to her shock and horror, found that the cap had been cut into narrow ribbons. Nope. Not so like even that. though she had it wrapped up and in her pocket, yeah, hidden, it still got cut. But not the handkerchief that it was wrapped in. Oh, if I didn't that makes it that. even worse. Yeah, that makes it so much worse. <laughs> Isn't that so creepy? Oh, I hate it. Oh, I have chills. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. So then there were these three like adventurous guys from Winchester who were like fake news, and they decided to go <laughs> to the Livingston house and see the wizard clip for themselves. So they were like, "Can we sleep here? We just want to like be brave and see prove that up. we can do it and see it. Yeah, yeah and like say that you're all full of shit." Um, quote <laughs> however a few moments after they became seated okay first of all i would just like to backtrack and say that the article that was written on like miracles of the church.org or whatever dot com it was a dot com for sure uh <laughs> horrible grammar so bad oh, i'm, I'm sure. just reading the direct quote to you <laughs> okay for anyone quote, who cares this is like right on the border to uh like virginia okay between west virginia and virginia but in that weird little, I don't know, that little top part of West Virginia, mm -hmm. their weird little island thing up there, peninsula. Yes. <laughs> that literally just made me more confused. <laughs> it's in, it's on the border between what is now West Virginia and Virginia. That's all we need to know. I think, yep. anyway. <laughs> yes, it's like very, it's like the eastern edge of West Virginia, up in that top little put that there. chicken like thing. Maybe I just need to look at a map. Probably. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah. Uh, let's move you. on. <laughs> yes. I just like to know things like that. Even though Quote. I don't put them in my own notes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do you know. everyone else's research instead. <laughs> Um, quote, however, a few moments after they became seated in the house, a large stone was seen to proceed from the fireplace and to whirl around the floor with great velocity, which immediately caused one of the daring young men to hastily leave the home in utter fright. And add to these already amazing events, many visitors reported a, an alleged, oh my god, it says a alleged, uh, an alleged, <laughs> quote, rope. That appeared to be blocking the road leading up to the Livingston's house. However, when those who saw it attempted to grab or move the rope, they found it to be immaterial, and thus it was termed to be the phantom rope by some. The purpose of the phantom rope, it is thought, was to deter people from visiting the Livingston family, uh, for it is often a tactic of the demons to isolate those of whom they are attacking and oppressing. So... Okay. There's, like, a rope that people see that's, like, in front of their house. Like, don't go in here. So, but then there's they ghost touch scissors it. and a ghost rope. Yes. Okay. And also ghost <laughs> bells. 
Yes, and ghost And bells. also, um, we're about to talk about another ghost thing. Um, Peppa's also in my business because pizza. <laughs> you have pizza. <laughs> She's like, I too like pizza. Um, okay, slide five. So I'm not really sure if this is, uh, this can't be their house, but just look it's on it. It's a similar it. enough cabin. Sure, it probably looked like that. Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? Or maybe it it's was It's a great. log cabin. They all pretty much look the same. Yeah. Yeah. So the Livingston family was having a capital B bad time. Trademark. <laughs> uh, they felt like the source of the mysterious wizard clip was evil because, you know, like dead farm animals and their, yeah. ha- their barn caught on fire and they're losing all their money. Yeah. Um, so farm animals were dying. Other weird events like fire and property destruction were taking a toll um, on the financial resources of the family as well as their mental state. So Adam Livingston was finally like, all right, let's call someone from my church, the Lutherans. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm reading my own notes and they're, they're pretty funny, but I'm not going to read it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> according to records, this did not help. Um. Then he went to two Methodist ministers because two Methodists, two, one Methodist plus one Methodist equals a Lutheran equals a Catholic, apparently. Um, <laughs> but according to later testimonies, quote, um, whoa, I cut that and pasted that weirdly. Okay. But according to the later <laughs> testimonies, quote, apparently neither of these individuals were able to help with the extraordinary manifestations that were plaguing himself and his family. Okay. okay. Hmm. I feel like I've cut something out on accident. The other thing that happened in their house that didn't seem to make it onto here was that it (laughs) sounded like a team of horses was running through their house, like, in the middle of the night. Gross. Like a carriage and a bunch of horses, and it, like, woke the whole family up and, like, terrified them because it sounded like there were horses in their house. Yeah. And they're like, we certainly didn't put them here. Um... (laughs) So that was the other thing, along with, like, the bell. And that's something that they heard a lot. They heard that. They heard china breaking a lot, even though they didn't, like, always find broken pots and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the bell, the scissors all the time. The scissors were, like, a yeah. big thing. Like, you're just missing chunks of your hair Ugh. because the scissors got you in the night. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know why those horses didn't get in there. Anyway, there were horses. Um, okay. All right. So... Wow, that makes me wonder what else I accidentally left out. Whatever. (laughs) Okay, slide six. A remarkable dream. Uh, Are we supposed to be on the stone house now? Yes. Okay, Uh, just making sure. And again, this probably isn't the person's house that I'm going to tell you it is, but Google said it was, so. There you go. (laughs) Google never lies. Nope. Uh Uh-huh. Did not <laughs> has Google lied to me and told me that a giant fucking sea monster fish in a lake was actually just about <laughs> 20 minutes ago, but in your yep. time, a week ago, um, <laughs> in this timeline. All right. <laughs> um, so then Adam started having, quote, extraordinary dreams. And, you know, we'll get to that later. All right. Um, so in this dream, in this first dream that he had, he saw a beautiful church and Um, inside of it quote a minister dressed in peculiar robes then he heard a voice say to him that is the man who can relieve you so he had this like prophetic vision that there was some guy dressed in robes who could come and stop all of this uh horrible poltergeist activity because it was really like really messing with the family they were losing a ton of money like because they were losing animals but also because their money was just disappearing (laughs) um great (laughs) And it was, like, super freaky, and they were all freaked out and couldn't do anything Probably about it. Probably very right. stressed. A little bit. Yeah. Um, so when he awoke from also that dream... Also, they're probably not getting pretty good sleep. Nope. No, because there's a horse loose in your house <laughs> at night. And also, and scissors. you wake up with, like, bangs that you didn't ask for. <laughs> anyway. Um, so... Uh, when he woke up, he was like, new life mission. All right, I have to go find this this minister in robes. So that morning, he set out for Winchester to find the Reverend Alex Bellamane, who is an Episcopal minister. So Livingston knew that Episcopalian priest dressed in, I wrote, sick robes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when he went to see Bellamane, 
uh, the minister was like, no, no, we're not a, no, we don't do that sort of thing here. <laughs> we're, we, we don't, he said they had, he had no business, quote, removing spells, ghosts, and other things of that nature. <laughs> He's like, that's, we don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> we do potlucks. <laughs> that's it. Um, so Bellamain was like, but have you heard of what the Catholics are doing with that sick shit? <laughs> you should check them out. Um, since, quote, the Catholic Church is more familiar with such things. So Livingston was like, I am so fucking done with these Catholics. I hate them. I'm <laughs> over their <laughs> bullshit. One dies in my house and now I have no eyebrow and my wife thinks there's a horse in her bed. Um, yes. <laughs> so he decided to go uh, to, like, the only Catholic family in the area. Uh, the uh, Reverend Bellamain was like, yeah, go hit up these people. They're Catholics. They're, like, the only ones here. So he went to the house of the McSherrys. Um, so late that night, that same night, he met with Mrs. McSherry, whose farm was about four miles away. Um, and she came to meet him at the gate, and they chit-chatted. And he was like, do you have a priest? She was like, <laughs> no, we don't keep them in our hymns um but but she told him that there would be one celebrating mass um in shepherdstown the next sunday um so he's like sick i will be there all right (laughs) next slide oh my god this is gonna be like a five minute fucking episode can we talk about other things um (laughs) sorry can we take a like two minute break so i can go potty yes Yes, i'm gonna eat a piece of pizza yes okay oh okay I actually just threw up a little bit. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's a All right. Your pants. <laughs> I thought you were asking me that. It's not Peppa. <laughs> I didn't hear the Peppa part. Okay. Okay. We need to like have tangents now. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Just I'm demanding keep... some tangents. That's fine. Just keep talking and we'll try to come up with something. (laughs) Okay. All right. So now it's Sunday and Livingston went uh, with the McSherry's to the home of the person in Shepherdstown. Uh... Huh? Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I looked at the word Shepherdstown (laughs) and really just got confused. (laughs) It shut me down entirely. You just stop talking. <laughs> I think her brain died for a second. It's like Shepherdstown, but where's the other S? And I couldn't find it, and I went through the whole word until I found it. It took quite a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're doing great here, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to my friends, to my family, to my cat. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, Uh, man. (laughs) uh, Oh, God. Okay. Sorry. Wow, that looked really cool on Audacity. Like like a little caterpillar. Um, Okay. All right. So, they're at the... Um, house where they're where the priest is um so father yes. dennis k cahill k cahill cahill probably cahill cahill um, probably yeah <laughs> not cahill <laughs> that sounds, that sounds like kill. <laughs> okay so father dennis cahill of hagerstown or hagerstown i don't know it's virginia and i'm used to massachusetts where nothing is um, the way that it's spelled um yeah Appeared fully vested for mass, and Livingston lost his shit. He was like, that is the man from my dream. Um, He is the one. Okay, this is what he said. Uh, That is the man I saw in my dream. He is the one who will relieve me. And then everyone else was like, can you shut the fuck up? We're in church. Um, So he just like sat there and cried all throughout mass. And so when mass was over, Livingston went up to Cahill and told him his story. And he's like, I just really need your help. And Cahill was like, it sounds to me like you're full of shit. But I (laughs) guess I'll go. Mm -hmm. Um, Because he just didn't believe him. He's like, that sounds stupid. Horses? I mean... In your home? To be fair, even the cutting thing, that sounds made up. Because that isn't a normal ghost behavior. (laughs) I was gonna say, like, it all just sounds really weird, and then to, like, they named it Wizard Clip, like, I'm sorry, but that's the (laughs) dumbest name. Wizard Clip! (laughs) (laughs) 
and seeing it like on this historical sign does not help. No. I know, isn't that great? And did you see the moon and the shooting star? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, like I love it, thing. but at the same time, I'm just like, you I hear scissors and horses and a random rope appears. Like, okay. to me, if that were to happen nowadays, I would be like, you have carbon monoxide poisoning. You're like, <laughs> you need to leave your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, are you man. okay? What did you eat for dinner? Yeah. Oh my god, are you on shrooms? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so he did not believe them at first. He was like, I okay, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, yeah, because like you think of poltergeist stuff and you think of like speaking in tongues or like, Shit, shit flying moving. across the yeah. room. No, no, like... speaking in tongues is either you're a Pentecostal or a <laughs> demon is possessing you. <laughs> well, that's what I mean, like... Yeah, but that's not a poltergeist. poltergeist I know, I know, I know. Okay? <laughs> poltergeist is a I noisy wish if... ghost. I'm sorry I'm not Catholic. I don't know the no, difference. that's not I a Catholic thing. Difference. It's just a ghost thing, Shelby. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Shelby, Shelby and Shelby. Hannah. <laughs> Shelby, we are sh- fighting. <laughs> The way you just said Shelby's name, you said it how Alexis says David in Stretch Creek. I've never seen it. David! Ew, David! <laughs> Shelby! Shelby! Also, watch Shits Creek because you would love it. You would. I, I know that I would. I just, you know, I have commitment issues with TV yes. shows. I watch Dairy Girls and Chernobyl. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> because those are, they go hand in hand. I say, I mean, I'm laughing <laughs> totally. as if I'm not rewatching Buffy and Bob's Burgers for the 15th time each. So, like, I get it. <laughs> I'm currently on a depressing anime binge, and it's all shows that I've seen a million times yeah. because I regularly go on a depressing anime binge. So That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I have an entire list of new ones that people uh-huh. have told me to watch, and I'm like, yeah. or I could just rewatch this sad one that will make me cry, and then maybe I'll feel better. But you know what's going to happen, so it's safer. <laughs> <laughs> Is it I, though? I did because watch I know Mama what Mia. happens causes me pain. That's true. <laughs> I know when to cry. Some episodes of Buffy. Yeah, I know the cues, dude. <laughs> I, uh, I had my friend was over this weekend, and we had an a, like an old fashioned sleepover where we just like stayed up late and watched Mamma Mia. It was yeah. so much fun. <laughs> but the next we hadn't finished Mamma Mia two. We got like halfway through it, and the next morning, have you guys seen Mamma, Mamma Mia two? Yes, I haven't. Okay, you know the part where Here they're in the church again. with the baby and she's singing yes. to her dead mother? Oh my god. I told my friend before it started, I was like, listen, I'm going to cry. And she's like, oh, <laughs> ha, ha, okay. And then like 40 minutes later, I was still crying. I was like, I'm sorry. I just, I can't stop. I love Donna. <laughs> it was just, that song wrecks me. And it's the last song before the credits. And so then I'm ruined. I'm like, you can't even pump me up with anything else. <laughs> And then you just have, you know, Cher singing along with all of them. I know. Fucking (laughs) Cher. Like it makes sense. Shannon, you have to watch that movie. I don't care if you don't like musicals. You have to watch this movie. No, I do like musicals. Cher's the grandma. I just haven't seen it. I know. Oh my god. She's incredible. We're going to watch it when we live together because I hate it, but also love (laughs) it. How do you hate it? So much. How can you hate Mamma Mia? It's just... The, the because it's it so is, bad that it's amazing. It's okay? not bad. Oh my god. Oh, Have you Shelby. seen? Okay, everyone, at least for Mama, the first Mama Mia, everyone was hammered for the entire filming of that movie. I understand that. I'm not I'm saying that is a bad movie, thing, Mama Mia. I'm talking about the musical Mama uh, Mia. I oh, get no, that the I love movie the was musical. cheesy and shitty. The second one is so good. It's no, like I love the incredible. second one. I have the soundtrack in my car currently. <laughs> Don't come for me, so but... <laughs> I literally got chills thinking about it. I love that movie so much. It's also not a great movie, if you I think about it. It's a perfect movie, because, he- and I will tell you why. Because the problems <laughs> that they are facing are not, like, devastating, melodramatic problems. It's just like, uh, the hotel got knocked over a little bit in the storm. Wah! And, like, you don't have to feel bad the whole movie, because it's so uplifting. Everything else is so uplifting. I like it because it's so happy. There's, like, hardly one sad moment in there, except that part with Donna, and I do scream cry the whole time. Yeah. I think too. I mean to be fair I don't like happy movies okay well so. fuck you Shelby I guess <laughs> I'm just saying personal taste if it doesn't 
depress me, then it's not a good movie. <laughs> that sounds like terrible. You are in need <laughs> yeah. of some serious therapy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true at all. I love happy movies. <laughs> okay. No, I don't. I think, too, at least with me with watching movies, I don't care if it's actually good. I just care if I enjoy it. And I feel like that's oh, what 100%. Hannah is trying to get across uh-uh. here. No, no Mamma I... Mia is a good movie. <laughs> Mamma Mia no, is no, no. a good movie. I thoroughly enjoyed Mamma Mia 2. I love that movie. I literally own it and the soundtrack. Yes. Okay, like, yes. I love it. But that doesn't make it a good movie. <laughs> I'm disagreeing with you. It is a good and movie. That's... Period. Totally fine. Moving on, wizard clip. What's the, what's happening? Listen, I'm about to throw this pizza down <laughs> and crawl through this microphone and fucking kick your ass. <laughs> okay, Mom tell you what. It's a good movie. Okay. Tell you what. When you are here in the next, like, two weeks, we will watch Mamma Mia 2 and you can change my mind, okay? And I'm going to stay if very I change far your, away If from you that. change your mind, I'm the first in line. Honey, I'm still free. Take a chance <laughs> on me, Shelby. <laughs> I'm not going to be involved in this activity. <laughs> no, you are. No, I'm not. I don't want to be involved in this. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're tricking Shannon into this. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. Shannon, you know, we're finally it's... gonna finish The Witch. Just kidding. It's Mamma Mia too. <laughs> I've seen The Witch multiple times. We don't oh, need okay. to finish it. <laughs> Love of it. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. It's kind of hard to trick me sometimes because I am extra suspicious of everyone all the time because I don't like surprises. So like that's not gonna work very well. But you could try. <laughs> well, you we act like we don't night. know you. <laughs> you act like me and Hannah can't plan a thing and keep it a secret i yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you know us yeah <laughs> i feel like we're gonna make it happen uh-huh oh we are yeah remember what? that i will also remember this conversation so the second you two would say anything remotely suspicious about that i'm just not gonna trust you and not be involved in the in whatever activity you claim it'll it's- be Fine, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, we went on tangents. You happy? <laughs> we fought about we Mama Mia one too. Mama Mia tangent. <laughs> okay, but that was several minutes long. <laughs> okay, so the episode is nine minutes now. I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I don't even remember uh, what we were talking like. Where uh, the okay. story? <laughs> Kay Hill was like, "I don't fucking believe right, you." Right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Father Cahill went to the Livingston house and he interviewed every person there. So, like, the, everybody, <laughs> the children. <laughs> no, I have Waterloo stuck in my head. Thank Waterloo! You. Sorry. Every time I drive through Waterloo, I sing that song to myself. Waterloo. Oh, speaking of Waterloo, um, speaking of water. So, everyone <laughs> in the family said, the, the, told, told Cahill the same story. So, he's like, okay, I guess I'll do some exorcism. <laughs> so he like recited some prayers of exorcism and blessed the house with holy water. Mm-hmm. As he was leaving the house, the large sum of money that had gone missing from um, Adam's locked chest suddenly appeared, quote, as if laid by what seemed to be invisible hands on the doorstep near the priest's feet. So it just kind of like floated down like someone put it there gently. That's and weird. And there was his money that he had been missing. Interesting. And everyone was like, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. They were, like, really excited to have the money back, but at the same well, time, yeah. they were like, ah, what? Y'all seeing this? Um, <laughs> so that was nice of the ghost. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least he didn't, like, set it on fire and, like, torpedo it into the house. Yeah. <laughs> How about I blow up your money and your cow? <laughs> um, I mean, let's be real. If I was a poltergeist, that's what I would do. Blow up a cow? That's really rude. <laughs> Not a cow. <laughs> I love cows. They're my favorite. <laughs> okay, so, quote, according to the written testimonies, the, quote, poltergeist activity... Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Thank I'll you. I'll give that a solid nine. I don't think so. That, that should be up. the drinking game. How many times does Hannah burp each episode? <laughs> Listen, did I burp in the last two episodes that we just no, recorded? No, you didn't. <laughs> no, it's this pizza. It's it's an extra cheese pizza with 
olives. So, of course, okay. it's, like, literal but it, yeah, gas. But you sent a picture, and it was disgusting. Oh, my God. No, it's <laughs> perfect in every way. It's the Lord's it was, pizza. It's two episodes out of 53 that you haven't burned. <laughs> That's not true. you haven't noticed, that is I'm not determined to start a fight true. with him. I noticed. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Go back and listen to every single fucking episode. I bet there's one other one that happened. <laughs> there's probably at least one, but like any every more than episode that. before Shannon. I'm a gas and gal. Them. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't edit most of them out, honestly, because she just keeps talking. So like, I can't do it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, I was reading you a quote, but I had to throw up after I said it to you guys. <laughs> that is a sign of demonic possession. Is a lot of yawning or belching or vomiting. <laughs> Fun fact. Great. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Quote. According to the written testimonies, the quote poltergeist activity stopped for some days after Father Cahill's prayers and blessing, but then suddenly began to occur once again. This time, Mr. Livingston immediately went to Father Cahill and explained the recent events. Father Cahill came to the Livingston home once again and interviewed the family concerning the recent events and this time he celebrated holy mass inside the home the supernatural activity immediately stopped and afterwards the weeks and months that passed what oh oh my god this person can't write i'm sorry and (laughs) in the weeks and months that passed a renewed peace and calm for happened for the living that was not even a fucking sentence okay (laughs) anyway they felt fine they were like oh it's so much better thank you yeah amen um <laughs> so then the living sins were like i think these catholics are onto something too bad we were i was i adam Livingston was a shithead to them <laughs> um so they decided to convert um so they converted some neighbors converted and then some people who saw the shit went down converted and then some people who like heard it third hand were also like hey let's also do that <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know it's just like kind of like a chain chain reaction interesting um Okay, next slide. A learned priest is sent to investigate. <laughs> These are all titles from that, <clears throat> like title, cha- like headers from that article. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the capital C church uh, heard about the events and was like, "Yeah, I love that you actually write it in your notes as so the capital C Catholic Church." Yeah, because I think I'm funny when I do that. Um, <laughs> but it's just a joke for me. <laughs> I mean, no one else can see it. I um, mean, y- y- you all see my notes, so. <laughs> yeah, I only saw the bailiff part. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so the Water Capital bailiff. C Catholic Church was, like, sick. All right. <laughs> and, like, uh, the word of this occurrence? That's not what I meant. Um, The word of this phenomena uh reach the archdiocese of baltimore see i told you maryland would come up yep um i will now be using technical terms his excellency <laughs> john carroll baltimore You're are welcome. we gonna fight about hairspray hairspray <laughs> is a garbage movie kidding, i would never I say that about hairspray. hairspray oh but you can't but mama mia can't be a good movie even though it's filmed <laughs> on like the prettiest beach in the entire universe <laughs> okay uh. <laughs> I can't even. I'm so upset. Um, Are we good now? (laughs) It's fine. (sighs) Yep, we're good. Okay, got that one out. Well, she could have just seen the like demonic head roll I just did on accident. (laughs) I was shivering. Um, Okay. So, His Excellency John Carroll, who was the first bishop of the United States, was like, damn, I need to send somebody to check this out because this is really cool. Um, so, he sent his holy and learned Jesuit priest, Father Demetrius A. Smith. So for some reason, his, like, <laughs> it's not his middle name. It's just, like, a name people called him. Smith uh, Galitsin went to go check this out. So, that's the guy in the picture. Okay. Um, this guy, first of all, <laughs> actually, I'm going to tell you about him in a second. Um, so he went to Smithfield, Virginia, which people were now calling Clip Town <laughs> because of the ghost or the yes. wizard. I don't know. <laughs> the ghost, wizard, poltergeist, demon. <laughs> Mr. Clip. At all. Wizard. At yes. all. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. 
that is one of my favorite uh i don't know is it an abbreviation no um like technical writing terms yeah at all i love to use it (laughs) all right so quote the 27 year old father demetrius a quote smith um was born prince (laughs) Dmitri uh galitsin the son of a german countess and a russian prince ambassador yeah (laughs) ambassador of the (laughs) empress catherine the great and was well educated had several top uh, had attended several top schools in Europe. This prince priest of Pennsylvania <laughs> later became known <laughs> as the Apostle of the Alleghenies, and his cause for canonization is well underway. So the church was like, you, sir, are a servant of God, which is like a technical term. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like on his way to sainthood because he did a lot of good stuff. But yeah, he like gave up his nobility to be a priest um, and moved to uh america so yeah he was like a big deal over in europe and he's like fuck that call me smith i'm moving to america (laughs) (laughs) um so before um arriving at the livingston's home um father galitsin was am i saying that right galitsin yeah i am was initially really skeptical. He was like, I don't think this is true. And he said that he wanted to try to um, disprove all of these allegations with science and or psychology. He's like, it must just be like bad shrooms or eating or something. I don't know. But he was like going to disprove it all. Mm -hmm. Um, He wrote to a friend, quote, my view in coming to Virginia and remaining there three months was to investigate those extraordinary facts at the Livingstons, of which I had heard so much and which I could not prevail upon myself to believe. But I was soon converted to a full belief of them. No lawyer in a court of justice did ever examine or cross-examine the witnesses more strictly than I did, than I did all those I could procure. So he like did his homework. It was like, Mm -hmm. it's a ghost. Um... (laughs) So, of course, the poltergeist shit started up again um, when Galitsin arrived. Uh, first, there were the strange knocks and clangs um, with no source. And the priest decided after hearing a lot of it and seeing some of the stuff that it was demonic. He was like, yep, y'all got a demon. It's no, mm-hmm. this is no wizard. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is no wizard. It's a demon. It's a demon. Um, so he... <laughs> Uh, yeah, he later told one of his friends, he was like, yeah, y'all, it's a demon. And then, um, he began to exercise the place, (laughs) which I love (laughs) using that as a verb. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) It just makes me, it's, yeah, it just makes me think that they're doing like calisthenics or whatever. Yes. (laughs) (sighs) But they're not, it has an O in it. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. You can read it. You can do it. Okay. Quote. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Um, <laughs> sorry. What? Quote. This is five hours. I'm just. I was just doing some math. Okay. Five, okay. five hours. We've been doing this. Yes. Okay. Quote. Yes. As he commenced praying, the rattling and rumbling increased, as if coming from innumerable, innumerable horse-driven wagons, which filled the house, rattling his nerves to such an extent that he had to stop the prayers of the simple exorcism. After a few moments of reflection, he came to the conclusion that he needed the assistance of Father Cahill, who returned to the living with him to the Livingstons, and bidding all the family to kneel down, together they commanded the evil spirits to leave the house and cease all the disturbances. After what seemed like some resistance on the part of the evil spirits, they were finally conquered and compelled to obey the priest. The unpleasant manifestations were gone for good and never returned, and then began the extraordinary time of grace for the Livingston family. Okay. Our story is not over. So they drove out the demon. (laughs) Yes. Demon is gone. All right. And now we're going to do some hardcore Catholic propaganda. Are you ready? Yes. (laughs) Be prepared to be converted. All right. So (laughs) after. We'll see. (laughs) I know this is like, oh, you can go to slide nine. I don't know where you people are. Um, (laughs) But look at that book. I just love it. I feel like I've seen that before. Somewhere. A historical account. I don't know. Wizard Clip Marshall. And The Voice. <laughs> maybe it just looks really it's similar beautiful. to like other old books. I don't know. Yeah, maybe just that cowboy gets used a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, maybe not a cowboy. Maybe he's a, I think he's more of a farmer. Yeah, either way. Oh, okay. You know, it looks so, like a, a farmer in front of a log cabin. 
What? Yeah. In America? <laughs> <laughs> Never. That's so obscure. I figured out what it is. My brain saw the color scheme and was like, Catcher in the Rye. I don't know why. Oh my the god, it I is the Catcher in the Rye. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what it was. <laughs> Only because yeah. it's yellow and red, but you know. Yeah. Um, but that's the Holy Spirit, so. Mm. Okay. <laughs> if you say Just so. Just kidding. I don't know what it, I don't, it's not because according to this, it's not. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> quote. <laughs> Again, these are all from that uh, Catholic website or the <laughs> miraclesofthechurch.com. Mm-hmm. I can't spell dot org. Um, <laughs> you're right at home here, Hannah. Why are you objectifying us and being mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. You also can't spell. Okay. Um, <laughs> quote. For scarcely had the Livingston family been relieved of the uh, whoa. Uh, re- <laughs> <laughs> For scarcely had the Livingston family been relieved from the renewed torments of the spirits than they were visited by a consoling voice, which remained with them for seventeen years. It has been strongly believed that this voice came from the souls, came from some soul suffering in purgatory, very likely a priest because of the because of the voice's knowledge of Latin and liturgical hymns, who for some reason was permitted by God to visit, console, and instruct the family in Catholic life. Okay, so like I said, this is very much Catholic propaganda. I'm so sorry, um, but I'm <laughs> just listen. <laughs> yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> okay. Many suppose that all the supernatural events that occurred in the Livingston family over the years, both the evil manifestations and the later mystical voice, were all willed by God to give evidence to the truth of the Catholic faith and the power of the church and its blah, blah, blah. Like, so, basically, God was like, hey, let's have everyone be Catholic. Okay. <laughs> At least one demon and then a mystical voice. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> You are not kidding when you said it was I thought you were exaggerating, and you're not. (laughs) I'm not kidding. I'm so sorry. There's one more really propaganda y thing that I'm going to read to you, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay. Quote, and (laughs) this is like when he first heard the voice. Quote, and so it was that one night a bright light awoke Mr. Livingston, and a clear, sweet voice told him to arise, call his family together, and to pray. And so he did, and the mysterious voice prayed with them, guiding them and leading them in their prayers. After the prayers, the voice from the other side spoke to them in the most simple yet eloquent manner of all the great mysteries of the Catholic faith to which they had recently assented, but which only limited, in, but with only a limited uh, instruction and understanding. So, like, they became Catholics, but they didn't have any like uh, formal training, if that, yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> <Yes>. term, <laughs> they didn't go to Catholic college. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, but now these truths dimly understood before, yet accepted with faith because the church gave them, now became clear, intelligible, fascinating, and even more beautiful in their extraordinary truth. Good and evil and the power of Jesus and his church and its representatives over the devil and his demons were made manifest in the living sins and all those who known them in the most extraordinary, unforgettable way. Okay, so basically a voice spoke to Mr. Livingston and told him uh told him like the catholic canon without them like having formal instruction or teaching gotcha. in catholicism yeah. so they like now understand all of it okay um sorry moving on <laughs> <laughs> slide 10 <laughs> okay so see what happened what happened was um i was going to do the warrants today but then mm-hmm. they were, like, so dramatic, and there was stuff that was like, oh, Ed Warren had a live-in girlfriend for hundreds of years. And that, wait, that doesn't make sense, but you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Like, it just, it was just too much drama, and there was too much stuff to parse through, and I was like, I just yeah. need something simple. And I was like, famous ghost, and it was like, have you heard of the wizard clip? And I was like, I have <laughs> not heard of that. So, here we are. Yes. Um, all right. One day, Adam Livingston was working in the fields with his sons, and suddenly he, like, doubled over in pain and turned pale and was like, I'm D.E.D. dead. Uh, He did die. He just felt that way. Um, Mm -hmm. His sons helped him home, and as they were walking um, back home from the field, he told them what he heard, and apparently he heard all of the souls in purgatory screaming for help. So purgatory is like... Listen, I'm just relaying a story to you. No, I know. No, I'm. I that was a that sounds terrifying noise. Not. A, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He I said was it gonna was say awful. that sounds not ideal. Yeah, that was a that sounds bad noise. Not a purgatory is a real noise. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, so purgatory is like the place in between hell and heaven. You like go there and you 
you have to wait a while because you weren't super good. Uh, <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I, that's like how I understand it. But anyway, he heard all the store, the stores, the souls in purgatory screaming for help. Um, and then he was like, I am forever changed because the sound was like so horrifying to him. Yeah. Um, so he like was a little bit like it never left his mind or his heart. And so he was always like, we are praying for the souls of purgatory today. Everyone calm down. It's just what we're doing. Um, so it gets weirder. Uh, Great. If this hasn't been weird enough for you. Um, so one night the voice TM uh, made the Livingstons get up three times in the night and pray for a specific soul in purgatory one of Livingston's daughters I think it was the daughter it might have been the second wife I'm not entirely sure (laughs) the history is listen it was the 1790s I don't know what was up Yeah. Um, it just said one of the girls and I was like okay that could be so many people (laughs) yeah right Um, but she began to think Quote, after all the souls, wait, after all the souls could have saved the, oh, sorry, there are no commas in this. After all, (laughs) comma, the souls could have saved themselves, and so they have deserved their pains. And besides, the whole thing is exaggerated. So she's thinking this in her head. And then suddenly the entire family hears, help, help, like all the screams of the people in purgatory Mm -hmm. screaming help. And then they were like, oh, shit, what kind of help do you need? And the souls were like, we need prayers, for we are in excruciating torments. And then the daughter was like, fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <it's bad. laughs> I have a question just with that. Mm-hmm. I th- I thought purgatory was basically just like a waiting room and that you so were I. being like tortured. <laughs> no, apparently thought- you're also on nope. fire there. Okay. Uh, all right. But let me just bring something up really quick. Um, a lot of, in my experience, a lot of Catholics believe in ghosts because since we believe in purgatory, purgatory (laughs) oh my god i'm dying um it's just like a place where you go because you either have unfinished business or you have to like uh you're not like bad enough to go to hell but you like definitely need to like tidy up your soul before you go to hell yeah um yeah (laughs) tidy up your soul i knew that i literally just thought you were just like chilling there and just kind of hanging out waiting to be told to yeah. go one place or another. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that a lot of Catholics believe that ghosts are just people in purgatory because they're completing their unfinished mm-hmm. business and they're like stuck in an in-between place. And that's yeah. why they're just yeah. around knocking mm-hmm. shit over and being yeah. spooky. All right. <laughs> that's all. That's all I know. Um, okay. Okay. So here's the weird part. Suddenly next to them, there was like a piece of cloth because you remember they're all praying in the middle of the yes. night. Yes. At that moment, quote, at that moment, a human hand was burned into a nearby piece of clothing, leaving the space between the fingers not scorched. So it didn't, like, burn, like, a big circle, like, how your hand would normally if, like, well, not normally, but you know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) Like, like it was a perfect hand burn with no, no bleeding of the, the flames to the other parts. Yeah. Um. So the entire family saw both the flame and the hand touching the cloth. Gross. And we're like, fuck that. <laughs> so <laughs> um, they called um, the learned Jesuit father Galitzin again and were like, mm-hmm. hey, do you want this? It's freaky. And he was like, cool, I'll take this relic with me. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. They, he took it somewhere. I'd probably Baltimore. Um, <laughs> but he took it as like testimony to the supernatural events that occurred in their home. He was like, mm-hmm. look, proof. The family <laughs> also claims that the voice once said, quote, all the sighs and tears of the world were worth nothing in comparison with the one mass in which God himself was offered in reparation for the sins of the world. Okay, so that just means, like, you people can all keep crying and be in purgatory forever, but you you were there when Jesus died. <laughs> um, okay, it also told them. I'm just telling you a story. This is what yes. I read, okay? Yes. Like I said, it's going to be Catholic propaganda. Do you guys... People listening, they're looking at a picture right now that says the mystery of the wizard clip, and it's just a bed on fire with Jesus yes. being crucified. Jesus on the cross. <laughs> yes. In the background. Yeah. White Jesus, by the way, I would like to point yes. out. Yes. White yes. Jesus. He does have brown hair, though, so, I mean, yeah. at least he's not blonde. <laughs> I mean, there's that, I suppose. Um, so then the voice also told them to do things like be devoted to the Virgin Mary and to pray for souls in purgatory and be hospitable and live simply and modestly, uh, with your dress and behavior and just basically like typical 
time like of the time catholic christian yeah. stuff uh it was like yeah fast and c- perform penance and pray blah 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 whatever and then yeah <laughs> so they were like cool we'll do it sorry i was just reading i didn't see before in the flames there's a in, in the flames of the bed that's on fire in front of jesus <laughs> there's uh-huh. a uh, what does that say Diabol- diabolical activity priestly intervention and conversions in colonial america cool um hadn't read that part before it was too tiny for me to see sorry i just got really distracted by that okay (laughs) so whenever the voice would appear to them it would start by saying in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost so it's just like very catholic (laughs) this is all like i said high grade propaganda (laughs) Um, uh so adam the dad dad adam Mm -hmm. mr livingston was the one who mostly heard from the voice like other people heard stuff um but he was the one who it like directly spoke to um and he sort of became an agent of the voice and because he was an agent of the voice which i don't know um he started doing like real good works all over the place and was like just a good person from then on out Mm -hmm. um And if he was ever awoken in the night to pray for a specific person, he would do it without question. And he started to, like, receive messages without any explanation. And if the voice was like, and you have to tell it to this person, he would go and tell it to them. Mm -hmm. And so the, quote, messages would soon prove to, or would soon prove to be of immense relief, amazing prophecy, or a timely warning. It foretold events which were often later verified and explained the meaning of current events. So... He would have, like, these visions, and a lot of them became, like, prophetic. Whew! All right. (laughs) Slide 11. Okay. Any questions, thoughts? Is that it, or is there more? No, there's more. I'm just... Okay. There's a lot going on. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I just... This is something that always trips me up, personally. I think it's just because it's me. I find it so fascinating that when the voice people are hearing is claiming to be from their god or is religious in nature they'll just accept it but then the opposite they try to get rid of it i just think it's interesting i understand why i just like why would you not and again this is just me personally like if i heard a voice that was saying (laughs) i am an agent of god i would be like okay i'm hearing shit we need to go get that checked on you know what i mean well but again i feel like i would just be skeptical where i'd be like "Mm, but are you though yeah (laughs) that (laughs) other priest send you the prince priest of whatever they called him, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was like trying to solve it psychologically. He's like, You yeah. guys are tripping. And then they were yeah. all like, No, you don't understand. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just, to me, hearing a voice, no matter where it is claiming to come from, is bad. <laughs> so, as someone who does have auditory hallucinations from time to time, um, yeah, it's not fun. No, I know. I've had them before, voices. too. I have oh, them, too. So, yeah, I have them, too. They're not fun. It's... Have you ever had exploding head syndrome? Either of you? Ooh. Explain um, it to me. It's where you just hear a really loud noise out of nowhere. I haven't had the noise, but sometimes when I'm trying to sleep, I'll get a really bright flash in my eyes. That, not it's the same similar. Thing. No, I know, but it's like, it's, I haven't had the noise, but I've had that, and that'll like. Jolt I've had me the awake. noise twice, and it's so freaking scary. I it sounds like that. a car crash in my head, but I was in my bed. <laughs> last night, was it, la- it was either last night or the night before, I don't remember. I was like half asleep, and I did that thing where I thought I was falling, so I like jerked, except in my head, oh, I, I was walking, that. and I tripped. So my feet physically tripped backward, and it scared <laughs> the shit out of me. Oh, that's funny. No, dude, I'll, I'll have that all the time or when I, but it's all, like, it's like I'm falling, but it's me, like, because I tripped myself, so my feet will move. <laughs> like, I tripped. <laughs> uh, but yeah, see, so yeah, I haven't had, like, true exploding head syndrome, but sometimes I have the really bright flashes of light, and they scare the crap out of me, and they wake me back up. So I don't know if that's similar to the falling asleep thing to jerk me awake or what, but... Yeah, I've only yeah. had exploding head syndrome when I'm really tired. I had it yeah. twice, and it was so scary. Yeah, I've um, heard. I don't think I've ever had it, but I feel my... like you would know. <laughs> you would know. It's yeah. like a really loud, it, not a really loud noise. It's like the loudest noise you've ever heard, except it's in your head and you're like, yeah. Trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, then I've never had that. I don't know. My 
my body does really weird things with sleep and just in general. So like, <laughs> especially like my brain. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've never had that. So yeah, that doesn't sound pleasant. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Although I'd probably take that over sleep paralysis because let oh, me yeah. tell you, yeah. my sleep paralysis demon is not a fun time. No. He's spooky. The devil did speak to me once and I was not yes. about it. <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk some more about the voice uh, yes. guiding this family. Uh, mm-hmm. We're almost done. Okay. Um, so where the Livingstons lived, um, and in their time, there was no prominent priest in the area. The Like I said, the area was super duper rural and every... Rural. Ugh, oh my god. I can't say hip. that word um, either. It's okay. I, no. Rural. I was, it's because I've been talking to you two. Actually, it's because <laughs> I've been talking to Shannon. I was going to say, that's my fault. <laughs> yeah, that's not Shelby. I was gonna say um, I can say that word. No, just I know I, I can't. <laughs> um, so the area was very rural and <laughs> Protestant. <laughs> so there were to uh, to go off of that. That means that there were no like Catholic books or anything nearby, yeah. even in the big cities. There weren't. Mm-hmm. I say big city. It was seventeen. It was actually we're in the eighteen hundreds now. Um, yeah. But yeah, there weren't like any books anywhere. So when yeah. um. The bishop um, and then the two priests went to the family to talk to them. They were like, oh, my God, you guys have, like, such a deep, profound knowledge of the Catholic faith. And they were like, yes, the voice told us all about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was, like, another (laughs) surprising thing that had happened. Yeah. Um, So the voice told Adam once that it had been alive, that it was, like, a flesh and blood person. um, And that he would, or not he, that the... That the voice would reveal itself to him before Adam died. So Adam died in 19... Oh my god. 1820. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a long life there. He just, he kept, you know, he kept going. He had a little bit of a Rip Van Winkle period where he took a long nap. Um, <laughs> no, he, yeah, he died in 1820, but never told anyone the identity of the voice. Um, but since Great. the voice knew... Yeah, but since the voice knew Latin and English and um, all of those liturgical hymns and prayers and stuff... The rest of the living since think that it was the mysterious stranger who had long ago died in their yeah. house for no reason. <laughs> and that maybe he was a priest himself, uh, since he knew all that stuff. All right. Quote, as the years passed, the voice continued to join the family in their prayer, saying the rosary with them and instructing them on how to pray well. It also explained the mass to them and start and stated that one mass was more acceptable to almighty god than all the sighs and tears of the whole world put together for it was god a pure god offered up to god okay so um that's really the end except so in 1802 livingston deeded 35 acres of his land to the (laughs) shelby look at that word it's on the last slide (laughs) please help me the Opequan Creek? Sure. Um, to give to the Catholic Church as, quote, a field to sustain a priest. <laughs> I don't know why they, a field, whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, according to the legend, the land was given as, like, a gratitude for getting rid of the demon and stuff. Yeah. And ever since then, this um, parcel of land has been known as the priest field. Um, and in 1983, the Diocese of Wheeling Charleston dedicated it as a pastoral center. So, like, you can go to this place and stay at, like, a it's like a church retreat. The, the, see these signs that I put on there? Mm-hmm. Those yes. are all around the city um, of, where did this take place? I read it to you, like, middle way. Ago. Sure, yeah, middle way. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, middle way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they all they show the the crescent shape and the scissors. Yeah. <laughs> and then the numbers are just for like whatever historical site you're on. But mm-hmm. all the historical sites in the city have this plaque on them. That's and cool. it's like super famous. So yeah. that is the story of the wizard clip. <laughs> and That's the Catholic propaganda that goes with it. <laughs> so weird. Why do sorry, I feel not sorry? Like... I don't know why that just seems like something we should know about, but also it's West Virginia and that state doesn't exist, so I'm wondering if it has to do with the Catholic propaganda as to why we don't. Hey, what's up? That wasn't in the Wikipedia article. That was just in that other one I read you. But the 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 uh, miracles of the church thing was the one that had the most information. Yeah, which probably means that a lot of this is a lie. Um, That's okay. (laughs) 
It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. And I it mean, is. yeah, it's interesting. And like, honestly, like with how far back this happened, like there's literally no way to know what. Yeah. And a lot happen? of the documents got lost because there yeah. was a written, there was written documentation of this entire event, but a lot of it got lost. Of course. Because <laughs> As always. time is yeah. like cruel. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so would you rather have horses barrel through your house every day or every night while you're trying to sleep or scissors cutting your shit up? Horses. You can get used to scissors. the noise. You can get used to the noise. Of a, yeah, I can also. That's okay. So... Can I, wait, back up. <laughs> I don't Shannon, know. <laughs> that's like having, that's like having an eight lane highway run through your bedroom at night. Is it all night or just for a little bit? And then I, I can go really back know, to sleep. Say. Is the sound Let's say consistent? It's like 20 minutes. <laughs> Okay. Let's say it's 20 minutes and it's going to happen between midnight and 3 a.m. Okay. And you don't know when. And I already scissors... wake up every night. Okay, well, it's fine. I'd rather, I'd rather be woken have up the like I already am than have all my shit ruined. I don't have any money. I can't replace that. That is true. I don't even have nice <laughs> linens to ruin. If you can yeah. buy my I mean, you could put on uh, headphones, earplugs. Or Except to the sound is a probably fun new haircut head. every day. Yeah, I don't want that either. You don't? No. <laughs> Can you imagine you wake up and Maisie's just missing a, or, yeah, just a big chunk of fur? Fur? Yeah. No. I got really confused for a second because the picture of that, um, that basset hound I just sent you, her name is also Maisie. And I was like, <laughs> wait, whose dog am I talking about? <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm voting horses personally, but... <laughs> I don't know. I want to. I already cut my hair like every two days, so a slick new haircut doesn't bother me. Can I see an bother example me? of the haircut before I make my decision? Or <laughs> <laughs> are me and the ghost gonna be friends? Mm -hmm. We're just gonna chat about our lives for like an hour. I also have awkwardly you know, sleep meds where I sleep through everything. Maybe this would be one of the things I sleep through. We'll never know. But horses screaming in your maybe house. I don't know slept through a tornado yeah well fair which I feel like is fairly similar to hearing a bunch of horses stampeding <laughs> is it though I don't know <laughs> I'm just guessing <laughs> I'm just saying ghost horses versus a tornado who would yes. win <laughs> sharknado 17 ghost horses yes horse nado instead okay that was interesting, and like I mean, like we've said multiple times, we haven't heard of this before, so which is just weird. Yeah, I like covering stuff that oh, I haven't I heard of that. before. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That yeah, was cool. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Good times. Anyway. Okay, and um, now we're done uh, with our four and a half hour recording. Thank God. Five and a half hours. We started. Oh uh, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Five I don't and know. Half. I don't think we're going to get through four episodes. Do I didn't do the notes. We're not doing four today. Oh, I didn't even do the notes Jesus. yet. <laughs> no, I mean next week. Oh, well, if we start earlier than 3 p.m., hopefully we can. <laughs> Maybe. We'll I see. Yeah. Anyway, our ending is that we have no ending. Okay. <laughs> Before we get on this. Yes. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye, friends. Thanks for listening to The Triad. Our music is by Scott Buckley. Our audio is recorded by our sound engineers, Craig Bott and Audrey Credo. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr as The Triad Podcast. We're also on Patreon as The Triad. Currently, all Patreon funds will go towards the cost of hosting the show. Each tier has its own rewards, but every patron receives our undying gratitude. Do you have comments, questions, or stories? Email us at thetriadpod at gmail.com. And thank you again for listening to The Triad, where we're spooky but sensitive.